EC Electronics. This is an interview preparation series video of uh, EC Electronics. Today we are going to see some questions from the embedded system area. That is some basic questions that can come from the embedded system area. We are going to discuss in this video. So there is a lot of opportunities in the embedded system field. There are a lot of people who's uh, wanting to get into the embedded system field and they are doing a lot of courses. And uh, for that, uh, today we are going to discuss some questions from the embedded system area. Okay, so I have all the questions in my hand. Let us read out the questions one by one. First, uh, if the interviewer is asking you, what is an embedded system? That is, if you are aware of the concept of an embedded system, in order to check that, if the interviewer is asking you, what is an embedded system? Then you have to answer that embedded system is actually a combination of hardware, software and an OS. That is, it is a system combining of hardware and software and this can be either an independent system or a part of a large system and the major uh, feature of this embedded system is that it is having dedicated hardware and software in order to perform a specific function. So this embedded system's job is to do a specific functionality unless uh, that is it cannot be used for uh, doing a lot of various purposes. It can be used only for performing a specific functionality and it has the hardware and software and OS in order to perform this dedicated or specific functionality. So the main key point of embedded system is that it is a dedicated system for a dedicated job. So that is the first question. Next question. What are the various examples of embedded systems? So you should be uh, knowing in real life what are the various examples. So in order to uh, in order to test that, if the uh, embedded if the interviewer is asking you the various examples, and you should be saying digital camera, ATM, then washing machine, automatic washing machine, printer. So all these things are examples you can actually point out around you that are actually embedded systems, and they if you if you think about these systems, they are actually used for a specific functionality. In order to uh, wash clothes, we are using a washing machine. It cannot be used for a general purpose. It is a specific function. For example, a printer it is only for taking out printouts. Okay, so that is uh, the various examples of embedded systems. Okay, so there are a, a lot of other examples also. If you Google it, you can find out. Anyway, surrounding you, these are some examples. Okay, next question. What is the difference between computer and an embedded system? So we can say computer as a general purpose system, whereas embedded system is something different. So uh, while uh, discussing about the embedded system, we are always saying that it is used for uh, performing a specific functionality or a dedicated function, whereas computer uh, we can use for uh, designing of various programs or various applications we can uh, actually design with the help of a computer. So it is called a general purpose system, whereas an embedded system is something different from it. It is used for a dedicated functionality or in order to perform a specific function. So that is the key difference between a computer and an embedded system. Next question. What are the various components of an embedded system? So if you generalize or generally categorize the uh, the components of an embedded system, you can say it is hardware components, software component and an operating system. And this all these components, hardware, software and the operating system, mostly this operating system will be real time operating system. That is RTOS they will be using. Okay, so this hardware and software is dedicated for performing only the functionalities of the embedded system not for a general purpose software or general purpose hardware they won't use only the required amount of hardware and the software they'll be using in the embedded system so some examples you can say it is timer io uh, the processor memory etc are the various hardwares and the uh, softwares are solely dedicated to perform that specific function so it consists of generally hardware software and an operating system so like in any other system the operating system's functionality is to coordinate this hardware and software. So uh, you should be aware of these things. Next question. The difference between a microcontroller and a microprocessor. Now why this uh, question is relevant? If you see the questions, interview questions of any of the embedded systems on various sites, you can find this question. Now what is the relevance of this question? Because in some embedded systems, they are using microcontroller. In some embedded systems, they are using microprocessor. Now, what is the main difference between this? A microcontroller is a single chip consisting of all the peripherals, memory, everything is included in a single chip. 
then it then we call it as a microcontroller whereas a microprocessor consists of only the alu uh, the stack pointer pc and clocking unit only these things are present on a single chip the other peripherals whatever we need we have to add externally to this chip so only then it forms a complete system so such a uh, device or such a system is called a microprocessor whereas in a microcontroller all these peripherals memory and everything is included on a single chip so that is a basic difference between a microcontroller and a microprocessor okay so i have included also an image differentiating these two microcontroller and microprocessor so please do have a look in order to understand more about the architecture of this what is the difference between hard real time system and soft real time system this is also very very uh, used for uh, very very commonly heard question so uh, we, uh, we have discussed that in a in a embedded system there is a hardware there is a software and there is a operating system which is 90% of the time it is a real time operating system now this real time operating system can be categorized as hard real time operating system and soft real time operating system now a hard real time operating system means it uh, is having a very critical deadline means uh, in what is actually a real time operating system real time operating system means it they are operating systems or os giving more importance to time that is uh, we, uh, there are certain functions or there are certain processes we uh, we do with the help of operating system right so uh, if the these processes are time bounded that means if there is some deadlines given to these uh, processes and if the operating system is giving more importance to the time or the deadline then such operating systems are called real time operating system so the time is very very important in those real time operating system whereas in uh, other operating systems that is uh, whereas in uh, general other type of non real time operating systems the performance is important the time is not important however time it take if the performance is good then such type of operating systems are called non real time operating system okay so the examples of real time operating systems you can see as unix linux uh, ubuntu etc are various uh, real time operating systems now this real time operating system that is the operating system which give importance to time can be categorized as to hard real time and soft real time hard real time means if the deadline is missed then the system crash can occur that is some catastrophic problems or some deadly problems can occur if the if the process is missing its deadline then such rtos or real time operating systems are called hard real time system so we can we cannot even think of missing a deadline in a hard os or hard os system whereas in soft real time operating system even though the process is missing the deadline the uh, the performance of the system is degraded nothing much serious is is not going to happen okay so such uh, type of operating systems are called soft real time operating system so these are the two categories of hard real time that is uh, categories of real time operating systems that is hard real time operating system and soft real time operating system so if you if you want me to do a detailed video on real time operating systems introduction or uh, any topic from this rtos please do mention in the comment section we'll be doing a video okay so anyway if you have to uh, face such a question you should be answering this if the time is very very important if something deadly will happen if the uh, deadline is missed then such operating systems are hard real time and if uh, even if the deadline is missed uh, no serious issues is going to happen means that is soft real time so the word also indicates soft and hard okay so that is a difference or that is a category of a hard uh, that is a category of a rtos next question differentiate testing and verification so what is testing and what is verification so uh, while designing an embedded system there is a design cycle of any systems likewise there is a design cycle for an embedded system also so uh, while designing uh, the life cycle of a embedded system during the designing stage itself a verification is done in order to check whether the system can function right or any problems will happen 
So for that, we include a verification stage in the design cycle of an embedded system. Okay, so for example, a printer, during the designing of a printer, we include a stage called verification stage in which we are going to check whether the, uh, that is, we are going to check the system logically that whether the uh, system will function as it is, uh, that is the way it is designed or such a stage is called verification stage. That is, this stage is actually happening before manufacturing of your embedded system. Say it is a printer. And what is the difference between the testing? In testing, if the, uh, the testing means it is happening after the uh, system has been designed, that is after the system has been manufactured, if uh, the testing of the device is happening means that is actually called testing. So if the uh, verification, if we are talking about the verification stage means that is happening before manufacturing of your embedded device. Okay, so that, that is the difference between testing and verification. Next question. What is a device driver? So that is, this is a very, very important question. So we have uh, seen a lot of, uh, we have heard a lot of things about device drivers. There are various device drivers. Now what is actually a device driver? Device driver means these drivers or these programs or these softwares are actually used to drive the device. For example, if you are connecting some hardware device to your computer, there will be some uh, icon uh, showing in the uh, in the bottom menu. That means uh, first uh, the system will ask for the permission in order to connect the device. Then in order to operate that external hardware device properly within your computer, some software should be there to interface between this computer and the external hardware device connected. So this software is actually called the device driver. And the function of this device driver is to make the uh, hardware device which is connected to, the, to your computer or your system to function properly. So in order, to, uh, in order to make the functioning of your external device proper, some device driver or some uh, device program has to be installed in your system that, uh, that is called a device driver. So it is actually acting as an interface between the computer and the external device. So I hope it is clear. Next question. What is a watchdog timer? So this is also very, very important if you are studying microcontroller or microprocessor or any uh, that processors or controllers and also for embedded systems. Now watchdog timer is actually an electronic timer which is designed in order to ensure the safe working of your system. So what will happen is that this watchdog timer has a periodic timeout. So while the system is functioning normally without any prob uh, problems or any crashes, uh, the system will itself reset this timer within this timeout period. So consider that some clashes happened or some pro uh, problems happened within the system and the system cannot reset this watchdog timer means it will it will generate a time out signal and this time out signal is to uh, is to make the system aware that some problem is happening or some clashes or some uh, errors is happening so the watchdog timer is actually designed to ensure the proper working of the system without any problems so when some problem is happening means it will go to the timeout, uh, timeout stage and uh, some system recovery programs are included within that routine. Okay, so in order to make the system work properly, watchdog timer is used. Okay, so that is the answer. Next question. What is the need for infinite loop in embedded system? In embedded systems, the infinite loop is actually uh, for monitoring some parameters of the system. For example, uh, uh, consider an automatic uh, chocolate vending machine. Okay, so whenever the user is going to insert the coin, the device is going to give that particular chocolate. That is a chocolate vending machine. Okay, so uh, in the case of a chocolate vending machine, the system has to repeatedly monitor whether the coin is being inserted and uh, whether the uh, user is uh, inserting the coin or whether the user is selecting some option. So in order to uh, have this monitoring, an infinite loop is running, always checking whether some coin is being inserted into the slot. And also, 
uh, it has to check whether the coin is uh, the coin inserted is properly or uh, the coin inserted is having the correct amount and for all these things it has to infinitely check for the parameters or in her, uh, it has to repeatedly monitor the insertion of a coin this is a very simple example in uh, all other embedded systems there are infinite loops uh, designed or kept in order to monitor some parameters or some changes that can happen within the system or also uh, if the system is anticipating some errors in order to uh, check whether the error is happening or not there are infinite loops kept okay anyway so the infinite loops are actually kept to monitor some parameters or some changes that can happen in the embedded system. So these are some questions which I have included in this video. I hope that this video was useful for your preparation. If you are preparing for embedded system uh, industry or if you want to work in embedded system area. Okay, so if this video was useful for your preparation, please do give it a thumbs up and also share this video with maximum of friends. And also if you want more videos, please do subscribe to the channel. Thank you.